Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Period Sis. I'm your host, Mandy B. And without further ado, this episode includes one of my team members over here at Period Sis. She is the reason you guys get an episode every Monday. And this has been, like I say every week, not only a journey for myself, um, but a journey for everyone involved with the official box owner brand. Um, shout out to our whole team. I want to shout out to Claire. I also want to shout out to T, who does our social media, um, as well as my co-founder, Sid, which you guys heard on a recent episode as well. Um, so without further ado, it's another tale of womanhood for women, by women. What's up, May? Introduce yourself. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, uh, my name is May. It's I actually I have this love hate relationship with being on the mic because I really love BTS. But moments like this kind of remind me. All right. All right. You kind of like it a little bit. I, I'm not even going to lie. What's even <laughs> crazy because you you producing the show. A lot of you guys may may notice when you listen that I do it, an intro and an outro. And those are normally done completely separate from the recording that takes place with the guest. So I didn't even tell you, I was like, I'm gonna make this real easy for you this week so that I'm not sending you all those different audio. Um, so that was the intro and I'll Got do it. the outro with you right here, girl. Um, <laughs> so um, starting this, as a lot of you guys know, I am the host of three different podcasts. So I am pushing out a ton of content every week and my very good friend, Carla, uh, was willing to share May with me. Um, I feel like we are in a complicated, uh, polyamorous relationship in which we know of each other's relationships. Um, you there's know, consent. You know what there, I mean? There's, there's consent. consent. <laughs> uh, we often have to pick when our day is for May because we both ask so much of her. You but, know what's funny though, Mandy, you say that you're gonna make life easier for me and that you're just gonna make the intro and outro, but I don't think you give yourself enough like praise. You're the most organized, I'm saying this <laughs> on the record, everybody can hear this shit. You are the most organized client I have. You be like, really? oh yeah, I have, I'm gonna give you all these episodes by this day, you batch record and send me a lot on time early, so chill out. Like, I know, that's yeah. just, a, you know, that's the part with me. Thank you for, for giving me my flowers while I'm still here. I don't think that normally happens. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this episode uh, specifically is because I learn a lot every week from the various guests that I have, but one of the things that I really love May is while May is recording and going through finding the clips that you guys hear, um, which I know takes so much work, you always kind of come back with your response with something that you learned or you really like the tone of the episode or you think something was really great or, and, and I just really love that as women on a weekly we're listening to these things because as women, we think we know it all, right? As far as what it, what it means to be a woman. Like, we know we have titties. We know we got a coochie, a box. We know, like, what we, we, we kind of, we, we know we bleed once a month. Well, we've been conditioned you to know, think we know about yeah, women. And we really don't know shit. We still, and, and we literally take it almost to the grave, the things that we go through. Like, when there's an inch, when there's a stench. And, and that was a conversation we had. Um, or, or even with our menstrual. And so, I guess I wanted to ask you, May, what have been some of the most maybe shocking information that you may have learned through your time as the producer here on period sis i mean i i think what's shocking is that women come on to the show and are vulnerable and honest not only because the, the work there's work being honest and vulnerable to yourself and internally it's a whole nother level of shit when you get on this mic and you right. are answering questions sometimes in real time you know, like some of these women are not over the things that they're on the mic talking about. They're uh, like, they have a doctor appointment the next day. You and I saw and felt like the pain from Melissa. Shout out to Melissa who came on and, and talked about her journey of, of IVF and and realizing that she couldn't conceive or, or even Kiera who came on and talked about her PCOS. PCOS. And I mean, or Medina who keeps getting things stuck in her what you're saying is so true because we're, we're we are kind of conditioned to just go through so much of what we go through alone and normalize and we, pain like this we, is what's supposed to happen and i feel like that's been the takeaway for me 
is how much everyone has iterated that you need to advocate for yourself and the normalization of abnormal things with our body has to stop. And I think that that's almost like the trend of stories even. 100%. You it also I mean? makes you take a responsibility for how you show up in the people's lives that you're in. So to answer your question, it helps me be a better advocate, not only for myself, but for the people around me, kind of understanding why. This last episode that you just had, it was about um, painful periods and and my um, old roommate in college used to have the worst periods. And I'm just like, you mentioned, like you actually said verbatim, wow, like I can't believe. I used to be like, that girl, she's being dramatic because I she did. her period, she's cramping. When my and friends wouldn't come to school because of their period, I was like, girl, we all got a period. What are you, like, it's not that serious. And she would get it, um, like ibuprofen, prescribed the highest dose. And she said that her mom had it too. And in that space, I couldn't understand what she was actually going through. I couldn't even be a good support system for her, regardless of how much I cared. You just don't have the information to even be a good advocate. So I think this is not just about what's going on in your own body, but to understand what other people around you are going through. So I think the most shocking to me had to be the fibroids episode and the um, and the um, ovarian cyst episode because- yes, wait, wait, Kiki. Yes, it, it opened up conversations in my own personal life, like my sister. My sister that gave birth to two of my nieces, I remember um, ha her having to get some kind of surgery. I'm like, something's up. She's kind of talking about it. Not really. No one's asking. I'm busy. I'm, I'm like, wait, what the hell was I on to not even inquire and ask questions? And why weren't you also willing and open to kind of share these conversations and things with me? Like, this is not normal. You or But then again, when we look at the stats, it is normal. Uh, what, 50% of women, I believe? Black women in particular Black women. get fired. Right, right, right. It, it's it's mind boggling. Um, we launched periods this what was that July, I believe, uh, last summer and maybe August, July August, and I still every time I get on this microphone with a guest, it's like they're telling me something that I was completely either unfamiliar with, unaware of, or didn't know that there was an answer to and like I said I, I really love that you guys tune in on a weekly basis and kind of really learn these things uh, along with me and and kind of my guests because like you said I do ask them questions on the spot I want to I want to find an understanding and it's also just amazing to kind of hear these stories and as as another woman also say I don't know where you're coming from. I've never experienced that. And so the idea that all women go through the same thing, even like you said, like I even down downplayed my friend's period pain because I was just like, we all have periods. What are you talking about? Because you only can understand what you feel like you can compare initially, unless you do the work. So if you're comparing that person's pain to what you have experienced, cause that's your reference point. It's not even your fault sometimes, it's just your reference point. Right. But it becomes your fault when you think that your reference point is true and that's it. And that's just where it stops. Right. So what I appreciate about this platform is that you come curious. And I think anyone who listens should come curious. You're not there to be like, gotcha. Like I know more than this person or this person's lying and they're being dramatic. It's like, now no, girl, you know. know, you know, I come on here and say how I'm not an expert. And that's the thing too. So when the show first started, I did get so much feedback at how, um, I don't want to say unprofessional, but how we weren't speaking from the expert point of view and how we weren't, maybe relaying the full facts or even saying certain words the correct way. And what I want to reiterate now that, you know, we're six months into this thing, I think another, another narrative that seems to be a, a continuous narrative in a lot of these stories is the fact that science failed so many of these women, doctors failed so many of these women and uh, again, the same way pain is one of the things that is immeasurable. You can go to the doctor, literally, they cannot tell you that there's not a measuring stick for pain. They, they tell you one through 10, right? They, like what's yeah, your pain level? Yeah, <laughs> but there's literally no tool that can administer or tell someone else the pain that you are feeling. And so 
I think that what I've enjoyed most about these stories is that they're not coming from professionals and they're actually sharing. Listen, I spoke to one, two, sometimes five different professionals and it took the sixth one to give me something that made sense and to actually diagnose me. And, and so I'm sorry, I don't want to sit here and bore the audience with the jargon of scientific terms when in reality, there are still so many things being missed by science and by doctors. Absolutely. And I think that the way you want to show up is the way that you should show up. So there are platforms that are scientifically based and they do their research and they bring pro like clinical professionals on and it's perfect that they have that. But that's not this space. And that's okay. And I actually appreciate it. Um, even I feel like I learned a lot from about pregnancy through just Carla. <laughs> and she came on the show and did a two part episode about wet pussy and yeast infections. <laughs> and then a serious one about, you know, actually being able to go to appointments during COVID and not having your partner there and having that support system. So just even hearing, uh, you know, secondhand experiences made me reflect back into my life about how I'm showing up for the people around me and how I can educate people, whether that's, you know, a healthy pH or that nigga shaving, I mean, um, washing with Irish spring can't be fucking you, which his Irish spring dick because it's a fucking of your pH. Hello. Like, and I mean, I've shared with y'all too. I, I believe this platform truly did save my best friend's life. It was the story, um, I feel like honestly of everyone where they knew something was wrong and it they maybe they felt like they waited too late to check on something. And when my friend told me she felt something in her breast immediately, I said, don't call me until you go to the doctor and get that checked. I don't want to talk to you. I'll end the friendship right this second. You need to go to the doctor and get it checked because I'm hearing too many horror stories of women that just waited too long or had they caught something sooner, they could have had a different result. And uh, as many of you guys know, like my my best friend at 34 got diagnosed with breast cancer and literally within her diagnosis had a bilateral double mastectomy two months later. And they literally said, if you would have came six months from now with this, we don't know honestly where you would have been and what we would have even been able to tell you. So like, it's so good that you, you know, came as soon as you did. Mandy, I just want you to know that that right there, sometimes you don't, you have to be the bad person in, in, in the people's lives. Like, hi, I know you're going to be mad as fuck. I don't care. I'm calling everybody in your family so that you go. Like, it, it has to come to that sometimes. You, you know, read the room. You feel me? Read the room. You know, you got to know what you're doing and which friend and who, which parent. Um, but I, I think that that's so important because um, if we pivot away from the most shocking being fibroids, to what you just said, like forcing your best friend to go to the doctor. Yeah. If I had that same energy, I'm thinking, wow, maybe I could have saved my sister's life because she passed away because of some stupid shit like this. Right. Like two years ago. So oh, at 27. Wow. So I think my favorite episode and also when I hit you up, I'm like, you should have given me a trigger warning. Like listening to that one. I'm like, wow. She was young. And, and it's like, wait, what? I'm just trying to do her things with my friends. What are you talking about? Come back. Like. I went for right. blood work. You feel me? And so something that starts out very small, it could be rare. It could be in your bones. It could be in your blood. It can pop up as, you know, tissue, breast cancer. It, it's going to pop up in so many different ways. So I think that you being an advocate to your best friend is so imperative. So anybody that's listening, fucking go to the doctor. That like, part. That part. It's crazy. But I wanted to ask you, is there a time where you interviewed someone or you were preparing for something and you were like, women just continue to amaze me. Like, you, how the fuck did this, and how, like, what was the most shocking mm. for you to conduct? Um, so of course, Melissa was difficult because Why did that I knew hit it you was so, hard? well, I knew it was just so fresh. Um, mm. and there is a bit of guilt in hearing a story from someone who wants a child so bad and me being a woman that does not want to bear children at all. The, the toughest interview that I, that I think I conducted and that I took away from as far as the strength of, of women um, would be my friend, Lindsay. She was episode three with, and she, I think went through like six miscarriages uh, before being able to birth two rainbow babies and going through the stillbirth, going through um, literally having to deliver, you know, a baby that was dead and 
with going through all of those miscarriages as well and the fact that she didn't give up and continue trying because she wanted that family I think that that was one of the most persevering stories um of period sis thus far and it came you know within the first three episodes I remember when I did that episode with Lindsay and mind you we you know we went to prom together like we were friends in high school and to hear that that's where her life took her as an adult as far as her her path to motherhood that was that was a lot and and it was that episode and again that was recorded right before the launch that's when I was like this these stories have to be told and this is needed not for if not for the culture just for the growth and and liberation of women as a whole so I would say um that was a hard one to edit too the miscarriage episode it's also the way she told it she was like the first one then the second one then the, I was the like, oh third. my God, she, oh my God, wow, you are phenomenal, ma'am. Yeah. Because yeah. you know how easy it is to just be like n- depressed and just like under a rock and never pick that right. up and try? Right. And I mean, I'll be honest, I had uh, a family member who was diagnosed with epilepsy and I feel like a, a strong part in her sexuality uh, going uh, and, and turning lesbian for a long time had to do with the fact that she would be told pregnancy is probably not an option for you having a baby, you, you know, you risk having a seizure during delivery and dying. And there was a fear in her reproducing or being a mother or enough of a woman to date a man that I feel like it did lead her a little bit to being a lesbian. Um, and, and again, I mean, that that's just a battle. And I talk about all the time how we, put the value of women uh, as far as getting a ring or bearing children. And I just definitely want to eliminate that in terms of, you know, Oh, you definitely are. Whether it's through your vaginal canals. Okay. Or through the, you know, your mom, or the booty hole. No, right. Or, no, that ass or the booty or, hole. Or that so scientifically though, cause she was in there like the, the, the neurons that, uh, synapses. So I said, Oh, she's out here with the facts for her anal plugs. Oh, so, Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause you have is. anal plugs and you, but it also too, you do a good job with partnering with people that you actually believe in. And then also kind of introducing things subtly, like, Oh, you know, just a candle. Maybe it's also, you know, some BDSM, but no big but, deal. Right. <laughs> I'm, I like, and I'm going to go ahead and throw a little teaser out there. The next box actually has Kegel weights. So, I've oh yeah. I've never even heard of yeah. what exactly, what are, what it's are a, weights. It's a weight that you put in your vagina and okay. you use the muscles to keep it up, which in fact will strengthen your vagina muscles and make you tighter. Yeah, so it's like you're you're lifting a dumbbell with your pussy. Oh yeah, there's there's the next box has seven products. So shout out to uh, each and every one of you who are box subscribers to Official Box Owner. But if you haven't yet, join the mailing list so you're so you don't miss out. The next box drops in April. If you yeah. haven't, it, it, also go Do review. That. Go review. Just oh yeah, we gotta we, we y'all hoes need a review. review. <laughs> uh, for those of you who may not have listened to every episode, you are gonna get to hear some clips uh, that May and I are gonna talk about. And hopefully, if you haven't listened to the episode, uh, it, it pushes you and urges you uh, to go to go take a listen. There are gonna be multiple choice questions based oh, on. Oh Jesus, girl, uh, I am not in. Uh, however, they're based on the episodes that you can. Okay. So some okay. are like tricky ones. I'm like, nah, she, let me. Girl, let me I be listening. <laughs> Bitch, I be listening. Bitch, you be conducting. So I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Okay. So in the episode with Carolyn Tony titled Thriving with Herpes, go listen. How did she say she contracted herpes? A, sleeping with multiple partners. B, having monogamous sex with a condom. Or C, giving oral sex. No, it was B, with her partner. Bro. Mon- monogamous sex with well and that's the thing about herpes not only if you look it up i believe 81 percent of us have a form of the hsv strain in our bodies there's eight of them but it is a skin to skin std and it's not necessarily even an std per se it's something that you can actually get without it okay what is dysmenorrhea it doesn't have to be multiple oh, choice. This could just be. Yeah, no. Okay. Dysmenorrhea is. God damn, I just did this episode. 
Uh, oh, dysmenorrhea, dysmenorrhea is painful, period. Isn't that so? That's what my roommate in college had dysmenorrhea, and I had no language behind it. I didn't even know there was a I name think. for it. Well, thank you for the period for educating yeah. us all. <laughs> dysmenorrhea. All right. So, what are some other names for your vaginal biome? A. Vaginal flora. B. Vaginal bacteriosis. Or C. Vaginal bacilli. All I know is this came from the Good Clean Love episode. And when I tell you, shout out to Wendy. I'm sorry I couldn't keep up. No, no, she was wilding on that, so I'm not gonna lie to you. (laughs) I'm not gonna lie to you. I was like, what? Shout out because I was just like, oh, oh, she came with all the terminology. And um, I will say this is one of those where I'm just gonna pick C because that's normally the letter you choose when you don't know what the fuck the answer is. So I'm gonna go with C and I don't even know what C was, but I'm just gonna circle C. I'm mad too because I was making all of them C and I was like, no, 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 she's gonna be onto my my, my, my fucking patterns. <laughs> but the answer is vaginal flora. And so oh, vaginal okay. biome is uh, essentially the ecosystem of your good and bad bacteria. So that was really helpful to know because that explains why you're either like super moisturized or your pH is off or you are more likely to get an STD like because of the penetration. Like it's just crazy. She she gave so much good knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I will say for anyone who is able to get their hands on the first box drop, good clean love pH wash was in there. And I know normally pH wash does come in a foam. I know we offered the foam, uh, the, the foam type in pretty kitty the second box um and so i hope that a lot of you guys were able to see the difference between a gel consistency ph wash and then the foam uh consistency because they are two different uh textures um but they also do serve different purposes there's a lot more water in the foam one um and also i just sometimes hate the pump because once you get halfway yeah it the pump starts acting up and that has nothing to do with the quality of the product it's just those it's pumps bottling. And foam. yeah it's, bottling. It's, it's just packaging but even for a honeypot and i love honeypot but i feel like i really only get half the use out of my wash because halfway through the pump just don't be wanting to work so you just mentioned something that as an entrepreneur you probably have to go through like the size of shit and the pumps and the and are we gonna bottle this is this gonna be child proof like did you learn anything super random while you're choosing yeah. and selecting your products? Uh, these are the, the products for those of you guys watching in video. So we're doing a soft rollout, but I have our balanced box, which is Bork Acid Suppository. And I have the Yummy Box, which is our apple cider vinegar gummies. I feel like apple cider um, is much more self-explanatory as far as the benefits because I think a lot of us were introduced to apple cider vinegar and the benefits years and moons ago. Um, So it's a more digestible form. But the boric acid is definitely one of the products that we weighed the different options and we compared it to. So we have vegan capsules with the boric acid in it, which means you'll you'll insert it at night. But there's the into your box. Um, But it was very like to me, the decision to go with the vegan capsules instead of like um, the cream suppositories was important because my experience with cream suppositories have been awful. I also don't like the leakage. You often have to um, accommodate it with uh, an applicator because it melts. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the monostat. Like, it's, kinda... like it's, it's literally the monostat uh, texture. The other reason why I didn't want to go that route is because of temperatures, it may melt. Um, so packaging would, would have an issue, say, if you lived in the South or you left it in your car. Do you guys hear all of the things that she's considering when creating products for you all? The temperature in the South? No, but literally <laughs> also outside of that, when and I've used Monastet. I also hate that it has to be accompanied with a panty liner or panties. And then I have to worry about if it leaks onto my sheets because I know that I'm going to have a whole, Pussy you juice. know, all types of I'm, juice. I'm going to be creamy when I wake up. And so to me, I wanted something, as you guys know, when you swallow even a pill, it absorbs in your body. And so that's what these boric acid pills do. So I'm excited because pretty much I talk about this all the time all of my friends have broken pussies um, and so they've actually been educating me on almost their private usage of wait you don't know about boric acid 
And this is something that I we've literally just been bringing into the group chats. So many of my my girlfriends have used it, and uh, are, you know, I be dropping. Sh- listen, every episode, I have a friend that I think about um, when I hear it. And I'm like, no, you need to hear this. Matter of fact, send it to 10 people because people need to know about this. That part. Like, I literally, I was telling you earlier, I'd be coming out of my room like, I, you know, yo, I know why your pussy's broken. You got to check out this there episode. There you go. There you go. Um, and not that I have the solve, but more of like, you're not crazy for experiencing this. Even when sometimes I was like, mm, is this kind of crazy? Like, well, what's going on over there? And I'm like, no, this is kinda actually super fucking bitch, normal. You, see, you know, when I record or most people know I am a drinker. Do you know how much water I've had today? Because I'm literally fighting a UTI as we speak. So my piss is bright orange because I'm popping Azo. You're in my piss. And I'm drinking water. So just so you know, this is how real, real we are over on Period Sis. I am letting and sharing y'all, sharing with y'all that uh, my piss and everything coming out of my vagina is currently a bright orange because I'm fighting a UTI. And it's bright orange because of the Azo, by the way. Like, it's not just bright orange because it's bright orange. It's the medicine that I'm taking. I only have one last question. And then after that, we can get into the clips. Okay, so there was an episode with Kinsey titled, My Period Almost Killed Me. How frequently did she fill up the pad? A, every 23 minutes. B, every hour. Or C, every two and a half hours. This is how often she would fill up a pad. Oh, I want to say she. I kind of have you fucked said, up with the way I like separated I, the timing. Uh, no, be, <laughs> but I actually think she said like every half hour. Essentially, I, she said every hour. Okay, every hour. I was close, but I know, I know whatever she said. I was like, excuse me. She would leave her house to go to work, and by the time she got to work, got to work, she had to change her pad. I remember that. Yes. Wow. So if you yeah. have not listened to the episode, my period almost killed me. Please make sure you listen to that. Kenzie. Yeah, that was insane. Yeah. Because again, like outside of an ab, like a, an untimely period. Yes. The how much you bleed, how much you don't bleed. All of those things are factors and could mean that something is not the way it should be. All right. So I also pulled a couple clips. I will choose three. Okay. So the first clip. Is going to be about dirty fingernails. Check check this out. One of the most important things, and especially right now, we we COVID aside, before a man goes to put his hands in between your legs, be sure that his hands are washed. Um, oh my god, yes. <laughs> if you have some dirty fingernail man touching you down there, you will absolutely contract a yeast infection. Yes. So this was funny because I vividly remember it, but I've also almost bragged about how my man just always washes his hands. And it sucks because we met during COVID. So I'm not sure if this was a pre-COVID thing, but my man, when he walks into the house, he washes his hands. We can literally be making out on the couch and we know we're going to move it to the bathroom. I mean, to the bedroom. He'll make a, a a stop off at the bathroom to literally wash his hands. But not only does he wash his hands, he swishes his mouth. Uh, Listerine, as adult women, we should definitely all implement into our 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 bedroom routine when we're with our partners. Um, I, and I think the same goes for what we do. I think we should be washing our hands, possibly swishing around some Listerine, because whatever we ate. If we go to suck his dick and then he puts his dick inside of you, then what? You're still getting that cheeseburger in your pussy. Okay, so this second clip uh, was our second episode here on Period Sis. And it was by a fan favorite. Some know her as Coffee Bean Dean, but others know her as Medina Monroe. (laughs) Medina, please take it away. At this point, my pussy just stinks so bad. I'm crying, Mandy. I'm literally crying myself to sleep every night. I don't know how long that tampon was in me. I don't know if it got fucked up and shoved inside of me the week before. I don't know if I shoved another tampon in. However old that tampon was, just like some stuffing in a Thanksgiving turkey stuffed in the back of my goddamn pussy. Black 
gooey stuff started coming out. Like I would pee and then drips of black. It looked like black ass coffee. I call my mom because at this point, each day the smell got worse and worse and worse. Now it has graduated from roadkill, like an animal died in my pussy, to so now a whole sm- human, a human body. Yeah, a human <laughs> decomposing. You smelled like a corpse. Bro, I smelled like a corpse. And I was like, I, I literally, it got to the point where I was staying in the house the whole, the, like a couple days I was just in the house because I was like, I'm not about to be one of them bitches that's out. You know how you'd be like, how this bitch don't smell herself. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, I didn't smell myself. And then also on top of that, in a couple more days, I'm going to see my nigga again. And I'm like, I can't, I'm gonna have to cancel this trip. I can't go see this nigga with a stanky pussy. With a smell, no. And I can't tell him. I was like, it's so new that I can't try to explain to him what's going on with my vagina. He's gonna be, you know, niggas don't understand it. He's gonna be like, uh, what? Do I have an STD? I'm like, did this nigga give me something? He might already be prone to why my pussy stanking. Bitch, I'm scared. So Medina is always welcome here uh you guys may have also heard medina on the over kink butt plug episode with jc where we talked about how a butt plug can enhance the bedroom um but also the fear of if it gets stuck and of course medina has a lot of things that get stuck in her crevices and and orifices and holes and so uh, in the, the time span of period sis, uh, my good friend Medina came on and shared about a missing condom. I mean, a missing tampon and a missing butt plug. Um, the graphicness of, of that just brings me back to be like, bitch, what the, she literally told me too, like she didn't want to travel with her partner because she said something <laughs> smelled like it was dead inside of her. And I was just a like, corpse. When I had my friends listen, they were like, oh my God, this happened to me. Everyone just out here with, so I've had a missing condom in my pussy, but a missing tampon? Come Mm -hmm. on. But I guess that's for y'all that like period sex. And if you've listened to this show enough, you also know that is not something that is my cup of tea. Okay, so this last clip from Tayomi. I mean, honestly, you couldn't leave this at just one. So I'm happy that you made this a two-part episode. And this is going to be a clip about selling a service. Let's check this out. I always say it's not that you as the woman you're being bought. It's it's what you are providing that's okay. really being bought. You know what I mean? It's like the sex, the conversation, your time. And so if you're charging for that, then it's not like you're selling, quote unquote, yourself. Because there are aspects of yourself that you don't bring to that situation because mm. that's not what he has bought into. He's brought into the fantasy. He's bought into you being a form of escapism for him. Oh, this is why I wasn't cooking for niggas. <laughs> exactly. Because he was not asking you to cook for him. His wife was doing that. He wanted right. you to be that space of like freedom for him to express himself. So he was paying for freedom. 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 freedom, freedom, freedom. What I love about Tayomi uh, is her openness. But um, a- as many of you know, I have another podcast called Horrible Decisions where we do focus on conversations regarding sex and sex work. And I thought it was just as important Uh, to bring on to this platform you know as far as to discuss the mental aspect of our box and the power of our box often use our box as a means of survival um, in a lot of instances or to get what we want and so I really just love that conversation and I thought it was powerful and definitely necessary for for this platform may I I want to ask you especially because I, I do know that a lot of our episodes are more health focused uh, what your thought was with bringing that episode onto the period cis platform and if you felt like it fit hell yeah I, I think you do a great job at balancing uh, not only reproductive and sexual health but how mental health all tie into each other and how it all encompasses who we are as women and is another reason why I love that archetype episode with Aisha we have layers of who we are and how we present I actually sent that episode to a friend and she admitted to me that she was a sugar baby I'm really glad that you feel that way because for this show to make sure it does differentiate itself and sound different from my other pod. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. It it kind of allows us to uh, revisit a lot of the topics that we had. Hopefully uh, this sparked interest in you to go revisit an episode as well. May, thank you for everything that you do as always. Normally, normally we leave off with stats and facts, but we talked about so many different things today. I just want to leave off with telling you guys to make sure that you subscribe, rate, and review. Period, sis, wherever you listen to uh, your favorite podcast. Also, make sure you follow us on social media. 
That's at official box owner on Instagram at O box owner on Twitter. And also make sure you join that mailing list so that you can be updated on when our official box owner products are going to be released. So go on over to official box join the mailing list. And I'm just super excited for all of you box owners to be a part of this journey, not only with me, but every woman that voices their journey here on this podcast. As always, I'm your host, Mandy B. I got my producer, May, who this wouldn't be possible without because I don't have the time. All right, bye. bye.